As we proceed with our year-long series of reports on Oklahoma's 13 remaining black frontier towns, it's becoming clear that there is a growing consensus and momentum to try and revitalize these towns and make them a destination for visitors and better for residents too. Jason Doyle joins us now with news this week that the legislature and governor are on board to accomplish that. Jason. Rich, this legislation sets up Oklahoma's Civil Rights Trail, meant to highlight Oklahoma's diverse history throughout the state and at the same time help those black towns put themselves on the tourism map. Governor Kevin Stitt and Senator Kevin Matthews congratulating each other on the passage of the legislation, which will bring more attention to Oklahoma's civil rights sites in all black towns. I am so excited uh, because I think uh, this ceremonial uh, signing of Senate Bill 509 is going to make history for the state. Matthews has been working with other lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to create the Oklahoma Civil Rights Trail. While it will feature Oklahoma's black towns, it will offer much more about Oklahoma's history. It's so exciting for me to connect Greenwood Rising in Tulsa, Oklahoma that told the story of Black Wall Street and Greenwood and what happened during the 1921 race massacre before, during and after, to connect that to the Clara Lupa Civil Rights Center here in Oklahoma City being built, to the Chief Standing Bear Museum in Ponca City, and the Fairfax Reign of Terror. Towns and communities will be able to apply for development grants through Senate Bill 509. Senate Bill 509 creates what's called a revolving fund, which is like a bank account at the Oklahoma History Center. And that bank account will house the funds and will monitor those funds and make sure that they're, they're uh, used appropriately. It will be funded by a mix of public and private funds. Matthew says he'll work with the appropriations chairs to put money in from the state. Before the towns can access the grant money, they must have a workable plan. They have to have, number one, a business plan. Number two, they have to have uh, an agenda. The days they're going to open, they have to create a visitor center and we're working with the state tourism uh, department. We're working with uh, Visit Tulsa and other organizations that can tell them the consistent things that need to be in those visitor centers. Several Blacktown mayors were in attendance for the ceremonial bill signing this week and say they already have projects in mind. We're going to expand our visitor center that we already have started, yeah. And this is another opportunity for that. You know, the signage, the advertisement we can get, you know, from signage on our interstates and, uh, you know, uh, state highways will make a big difference, you know. Uh, we're already planning our visitor center, uh, where we want to have it at, what we want, to, want it to look like, what we want to showcase, and uh, we've been planning that for a while. Representative Jason Lowe guided Senate Bill 509 as it worked its way through the House. The first thing we're we'll focused on is creating these visitor centers, uh, rebuilding these towns. Uh, originally, Oklahoma had 50 black towns. Now there's 13. And so we need to focus on those towns. We need to uh, focus on the economy, create jobs, uh, make sure that those areas are rebuilt. He feels this project will lead to more people discovering Oklahoma's history and culture beyond the classroom. Well, black history is Oklahoma history. Uh, we have to make sure that our young kids uh, that are growing up in the state of Oklahoma know exactly what their history is. And so this bill is a start. Clearview's mayor agrees. If you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. If you don't know your history, you don't know what's, you know, how to correct things, how to do things, and your pride and take pride in what where you came from, who I am. Tatum's mayor says it's only right for Oklahoma to highlight its civil rights leaders because that in turn will benefit Oklahoma black towns and other historical sites. It helps promote the, uh, the significance of, of uh, the black historic towns, the, the Native American towns, and all of those civil rights leaders who, you know, who uh, were courage enough, courageous enough to, you know, to work on getting whatever need is done. As the visitor centers in the black towns come online, Matthew says other elements to help promote the civil rights trail will begin to be used. Start with signage that says where these towns are. And then we're gonna use uh, QR codes and technology where we can have uh, 
the story told where people can go to their phone and learn about the history. And of course, the Civil Rights Trail will help bring tourism dollars along with visitors. We want to invite everyone to stop by Grayson, Oklahoma. You know, the first Saturday in October, we have our Filet Gumbo Festival. It's a special treat, and you're all welcome. Come visit Tatum's, Oklahoma, definitely. Just come to Clearview. Once you've been to Clearview, you'll always want to come back. We would like every Oklahoman to come, come to the Bowling Rodeo. Uh, go to Tatum's and see what they're doing. Go to Langston, go to some of these towns and support. Find out and take your children to find out more about Oklahoma than they know. And we want to let our viewers know that Taylor Jackson will have our next installment of Black Frontier Towns when she visits Taft in the first week of August.